Welcome into the show, Yinzers. My name is Jack Sperry. On today's show, I am going to be answering your questions coming to you from the fans. I am doing this on our live show here on Wednesday. So if you're watching this and it's not Wednesday, then you missed the live show and you can't get your question on the show. But if you have a question you really want to ask me, I can still get it on next week's Steelers Talk live show if you send a super thanks. So super thanks is this really cool, relatively new feature from YouTube that lets you donate to YouTube channels outside of live videos. All you have to do is click that thanks icon. It looks like that heart with the money sign there in the middle. Uh, and Bring in your question. We appreciate the support, man. And every single super thanks that we get, we will give a shout out on Steelers Talk Live. I want to give uh, some shout outs uh, to some people here in just a second. We have, we have the last five people that uh, brought in a super thanks. And here they are. We didn't get a, a, a picture here for the second one, but Gurr, uh, King, something, something, something. D not even going to try to say that. Then you got Jin Locke, Nicholas Harmon, and Gary Reynolds. Uh, last five people to super thanks. If you want to send in a super thanks, we will give you a shout out on Steelers Talk Live next week. So without further ado, let's get into this week's questions. First one here coming from King Confidence who says, STC support the content Steelers Nation. Steelers Nation, should we be afraid of OBJ and the Dirty Birds, AKA Ravens? And the answer to this question is absolutely not. OBJ is somebody that, you know, he had a little bit of success with the Rams a couple years back, but I mean, Cooper Cup was getting double teamed on pretty much every single play during that playoff run. Right now, OBJ is going to be expected to be a number one receiver again, coming off of a major ACL tear. The last time OBJ was uh, supposedly a number one receiver, he was in Cleveland, and we know how that worked out, okay? I, I'm not scared of OBJ whatsoever, uh, and, and as far as the Ravens go, I think that the Steelers roster is Far, far better than the Baltimore Ravens. So King Confidence, not scared of the Ravens whatsoever. Then we got President Nitty, who says, My boy Sperry, cost on moving up for Gonzalez. Now, first of all, I, if they trade up for a corner, I'm not sure if it would be Gonzalez. I think it would be Devin Witherspoon. He's a better press man corner than Gonzalez is. Uh, if Gonzalez is there at 17, I think they, they'd definitely consider taking him. But, you know, when it comes to moving up for a corner, uh, it, it also depends where you're doing it. Is it like at the end of the top 10? Is it, is it like somewhere in the middle of the teens? It depends. I'm guessing it's probably going to cost a first rounder and then one of your day two picks at least. So uh, whether it be number 32 overall, 49 overall, or 80 overall, you're going to have to give up another one of those day two picks, in my opinion. That's what it's going to cost, uh, and I'll leave that up to you uh, uh, to see if that's, if, if that's worth it. Then we got Not Webb's World here with a $10 super chat, and he says we should give up a first round and maybe a three next year for that left tackle this year and focus on getting Addison at 17, Branch at 32, Darnell Washington at 49, and Forbes or Banks at 80 and focus on this year. So now Webb's World, man, you always have some really, really interesting ideas. Uh, and you always want to stock up on draft picks, man. I, I, lo I love that about you. First of all, this ain't happening. It's just, it's just not going to happen, man. They're not going to want to trade. Next year's draft is extremely, extremely deep and talented. I don't think they're going to want to try to trade any of those future draft pieces. And a first and a third next year is not going to be enough to trade up into the first round, especially in the top 15. It's going to have to be at least a first and a second. Uh, when it comes to Addison at 17, I don't mind that as long as uh, you know, you've already traded up. I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, uh, Brian Branch, at number 32, he's a good player. He's probably actually going to be there at number 32. Everybody is saying that uh, teams are souring on him after a kind of a rough combine performance. Darnell Washington at 49, if he's there, I would be perfectly fine with that. And then Emmanuel Forbes and Deontay Banks, there's just no way in hell that they're there at number 80. They're, they're probably both going to go in the first round, in my opinion. If they're there at 80, you are sprinting it up there, but I just don't see uh, this scenario playing out. Then you got Dan, the Pitt fan here, who says, if the Steelers traded back into the first round, who would you want them to target? So this is trading back into the first round here. Uh, so let's say, let's, let's, let's just go about this one step at a time. If you're at number 17, you're either taking an offensive tackle or a cornerback. 
Okay, so uh, probably Broderick Jones or Deontay Banks, something along those lines. If you're trading back in, you're either trying to get that other piece. So like if you get an offensive tackle at number 17, you might be trading back in for like a Joey Porter Jr. Uh, in the uh, and, or, or possibly Jordan Addison at the, at, the, at the end of the first round. The Giants are picking at number 25. I think they would be highly interested in Jordan Addison. So if you want to sneak in there like 23, 24, and get Kenny Pickett a serious weapon that already has chemistry with him, I think that would be perfectly fine with me. The only thing is with wide receiver, I just don't want them. I just don't want their one first round draft pick to be a wide receiver. If they're going to just spend one draft pick in the first round. It has to be either an offensive tackle or cornerback, or I'm going to be one cranky Mr. Sperry. All right, now uh, what do you guys say? Name a player that you would trade back into the first round for. So would it be like a Joey Porter Jr., Deontay Banks, maybe Jordan Asset? Let me know the player that you would trade back into the first round for if they started falling. All right, now we got Daryl Oglesby here. $10 Super Chat. Appreciate the support, Daryl. He says, I think one of the tackles will be available at 17. And I, I, I tend to agree with you, Daryl. I, I would probably rather stay at number 17, keep that second, second round draft pick. Uh, one of these tackles is, might not make it. So these are the top of the line guys. Peter Skaronsky, Paris Johnson Jr., Broderick Jones. There's a, quite a few teams that are looking for offensive tackle help before the Steelers in this year's NFL draft. So when I look at the situation, they might have to settle for a guy like Darnell Wright if it gets to number 17. Uh, I, I'll let you guys decide what you guys think of Darnell Wright and how good that pick would be. And I think if Broderick Jones somehow falls to the Steelers at number seven, that is the ideal situation for the black and gold. Then you got CM Punk here who says, do you think Calvin Austin will have a crazy year? So uh, it depends what you mean by crazy. I don't think that it will be like super crazy, amazing good, okay? Like I don't want people to get their hopes up too high for Calvin Austin. I think he's going to be a solid contributor, especially on third downs, you know, when, when defenses are in their nickel packages. I think he can really cook some fools in the slot, not to mention I think he'll be a really, really solid special teams player. But if you're expecting him to come out here, you know, after a major foot injury at his size and just completely light it up, I, I just think that your expectations are a little are a little unrealistic. I think he's going to be a good player. He's going to be a good contributor for the Steelers. But, you know, when it comes to, like, getting to a star or superstar level, I just don't necessarily see it with Calvin Austin the third. So I'm going to be answering more of your questions here in just a second. But first, check out these amazing new Steelers draft hats for the 2023 NFL Draft. The new NFL Draft hats for all 32 NFL teams have been released, and I love this year's design for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm a fan of that kind of like neutral stone color that they have this year. Then you've got the, the gold lettering, and I personally, my personal favorite is this black and gold version. I'm probably going to get this one for myself. I love the logo in the middle as well. These are the best-looking draft hats at least in the last couple of years. Uh, you can go to chatsports.com slash Steelers Draft Hat to get yours today on the, on the Chat Sports website. And we got a bunch of different styles, a bunch of different kinds of bills for you. If you're a curved bill guy, we got one for you. If you like flat bills, we got those as well. So go to chatsports.com slash Steelers Draft Hat so we get the same exact headgear as the 2023 draft class for your Pittsburgh Steelers. Then we got another $5 super chat from Nat Webb's World who says, Han, uh, Han, Han, Henley, Washington, uh, or Sewell in this draft, if you can't get Jack Campbell, my IG is in the chat. Chugs, if you could find that IG, I would appreciate that. Uh, so I think by Hanley, he means Henley, uh, Washington. I don't think Washington's a linebacker. I'm not familiar with a Washington linebacker. Uh, but, you know, if you could get Noah Sewell on day three, that would be a good value. And if you could get Henley on day two, I absolutely 100% agree with that. Jack Campbell is the number one guy on my list. He's the best coverage linebacker in this year's NFL draft class. He's, in a, he's a plug-and-play starter, really good against the run as well. If the Steelers could get him at 32 or 49 there in the second round, I think that would be a steal. Next question comes from Young Noticeable 25 who says, Try and snag Porter Jr. considering his dad played for us and let's go get Devin White. So I disagree with getting Devin White because I don't think he's good in coverage and he's going to be too expensive there, young noticeable. But when it comes to getting Joey Porter Jr., I am on board. Right now I have him, I have him ranked as my fourth cornerback 
on my big board right behind Deontay Banks, Christian Gonzalez, and Devin Witherspoon. But if, this, if Joey Porter Jr. is the pick at number 17, and that's their lone first-round draft pick, it is a success for the Pittsburgh Steelers as far as I am concerned. Joey Porter Jr. is long. He is fast. He is very, very physical. Now, he does have some grabbing issues. You know, he can, play, he can be almost too aggressive at times. But I really, really like Joey Porter Jr. as a prospect. And bringing him in would be an absolute delight, given that his, his dad is a Steelers legend. Then you got DJ KJ coming in here with a question that says, are the Steelers done in free agency? So I think they're done making like big moves, like big money moves. I think they're done with those. But I, I don't think that they're done in terms of signing players. I still think they're going to sign an outside linebacker or third edge rusher. I, I, I'm still a believer that they're going to address that need in free agency, whether it be Bud Dupree, whether it be Justin Houston, whether it be somebody else. There's still a lot of really good edge rushers on the open market. They can get one at a discount. And I think that at the end of the day, I think they're probably going to get one. And in this Steelers pass rush is going to be one of the best in the league next season. Then we got another question coming in here from Steeler Sam, who says, why are we talk, ta talking to all these quarterbacks for draft visits? Do they not trust Pickett? Uh, no, no, they definitely trust Pickett. Okay, so the guys that they're talking to, like Jaron Hall from BYU, uh, Clayton Toon from Houston, these are day three, late round kind of guys. I think the Steelers will probably use a seventh round pick on a quarterback just so they can fill out the rest of their depth chart. Right now, Kenny Pickett and Mitchell Trubisky are the only quarterbacks on the Steelers roster. Usually you go into training camp with at least four. I think they're going to get a rookie uh, whether that be Clayton Toon or Jaron Hall, they're going to they're gonna draft somebody in the seventh round, whoever's still available, and then they're going to let that person try to beat out Mitchell Trubisky for the backup role, or at least try to fill that backup role for when Mitch, from when, from when Mitch uh, hits free agency. I think that they want to get Kenny Pickett's backup. I don't think it has anything to do with their confidence level in Kenny Pickett. So I want to know right now, what is your confidence level and Steelers quarterback Kenny Pickett going into next season. Scale it on a scale of 1 to 100 for me down in the comments. For me, I am going to pick a nice solid 85. I am very, very confident in him. He still has a couple things that he needs to polish up going into year two. And because he's a bit older for a second year quarterback, his, his clock is definitely ticking. But he showed some really great improvement and some really great flashes last year, which make me feel pretty darn confident heading into 2023. Then you got Mimic uh, Tarzier235 here, who says, what would you rank the Steelers running back room compared to other teams' running back rooms. So I think the Steelers have a very solid running back room. I, I'm, a, I'm a bigger fan of Najee Harris than some other Steelers fans are. I think that when it comes to running in terms of a zone blocking scheme, which is what they tried at the beginning of last year, it just wasn't working for him. He's not that type of back. He's more of a straight line kind of guy, in my opinion. And he showed that when the Steelers transitioned to more power run schemes last year, and he really uh, turned a corner. He really played well towards the end of the year. That's what the Steelers are planning on doing in the run game next year. And then you bring in uh, Jalen Warren to be your number two back, and he's kind of uh, he's kind of that nice uh, change of flavor there, where he's more of a re receiving back. He's more fidgety. He's, he's, he's definitely got some nice agility. I really like the Steelers running back room. Maybe not a top five uh, running back room in the league and maybe not even top 10, but very, very solid. And I think it's going to be able to really establish the run game for the Steelers next season. So if you haven't already and you want to support the channel, you want daily and free Steelers videos here on YouTube. This is the place for you. Steelers Talk by Chat Sports is the fastest growing channel here on YouTube when it comes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So if you want some daily Steelers content, news, rumors, draft analysis, all that great stuff, do me a favor, click that subscribe button for me right now. Next question comes from Damian Roy here who says, are the Bears and Steelers swapping picks but give up the farm to do so? So there, there's been some rumors going around that the Steelers are considering moving up to number nine overall and that they're considering uh, giving up the 32nd overall pick. So that first pick in round two uh, that was originally Chicago is giving that back to the Bears so that they so that the Steelers can draft their future left tackle. Uh, I've, I've been debating this in my mind over the last couple of days, and you know I have mixed feelings about it. On one hand, I really want to get that 
uh, that top guy at left tackle on their board, whether that be Paris Johnson Jr., Braxton, uh, or uh, Broderick Jones. I, I would love that, but on the other hand, they do have other needs, and that number 32 overall pick is extremely valuable. So I, I would say uh, the chances that the Steelers move up are relatively high right now, but the chance isn't zero that they stay put, especially if these teams that are trying to trade down are, are asking for too much. So I really think the Steelers are trying to get that offensive tackle prospect to replace Dan Moore Jr., but I guess time will tell if they can find a suitable trade partner. Then we got Yo-Yo here that says trade Deontay Johnson for a second or third. I'm not trading Deontay Johnson for a third round pick. That's, that's just not happening. Now, there have been some rumors going around that the Texans could be interested in Deontay Johnson in exchange for the 33rd overall pick. So that'd be the second pick in the second round. So if you make that trade, the Steelers would have the first and second picks on day two. Like that is something that would be very, very interesting to see. But Deontay Johnson, man, if you are going to send him elsewhere, you need to get a suitable replacement. Deontay Johnson was a godsend for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the second half of the season. Kenny Pickett targeted him on third down on just about every single passing play on third down, and he was almost always open. He was one of the reasons why the Steelers were so successful on third down on that, on that uh, late season push. I really think that he's a good route runner. He's not a true number one guy because he can't necessarily do it all, but I think that he's a really, really good uh, get open guy. He's very, very valuable to this offense, and it's got to be for at least a high second round pick for me to part ways with him. So if you haven't already, you want some additional Steelers content and some extra updates on, uh, on the channel here for Steelers Talk, go to my Twitter here and give me a follow at Jack underscore Sperry. I certainly appreciate the support. That's going to do it for this one today, guys. I will see you guys later. Peace.